Hey, what's up, ladies and gentle tubers? It is Tyler. This is a moto vlog on the Everide channel. Oh my gosh, I am destroyed. I just had the best ride I've had in recent memory. I mean, that it was just way fun. We hooked Joe up with a camera, hopefully got some really cool footage, and you actually get to see me ride. Um, so I'll overlay that footage uh, to the moto vlog, so, because I'm just riding home right now. So anyway, I'm going to answer some of the questions that I get most. I thought I'd just kind of answer them aloud for everybody. They're really interesting. I think they'd be interesting for you. Um, some of them are kind of channel updates. Uh, some of them are about YouTube. Some of them are about uh, the winners of some contests and giveaways that I've been doing on Facebook. So um, if you're not following me on Facebook, uh, we do fun things on Facebook. Um, lots of updates and things like that. I'll be putting, the, I'll be overlaying that stuff so you guys get to see the trip I had. I've got these questions written down. I've got some of them that I'm, I've been remembering and thinking about the whole ride but I will be pulling over to check all the questions so I'll just cut all that stuff out. I'm gonna try to keep it short and relevant and if there is a, some kind of a burning question that you want answered more than any others or maybe it's something that you've asked I'm gonna put the time codes below in the description so you can kind of bounce around and see the questions and the answers that you've wanted to look at that you want to know because uh, yeah I cover a lot of stuff so and these are questions from you guys thank you so much for asking questions sending comments and messages uh, this is the best community ever, ever. So first question, um, you said the T63s didn't last very long. What tires are you running now? Uh, I, I'm, I put a Shinco 244 on the rear. It's really close to a Kenda K270. It's a little bit cheaper. That's why I'm trying it out. Uh, and I've got a Kenda Parker DT on the front. The Kenda Parker is super aggressive and you know, you, you don't wash out a lot in the sand and stuff like that. DT stands for desert terrain. Shinko 244 on the back, you know, I hope it lasts a long time. Uh, the knobs aren't too far apart so they don't shred real quick because uh, I do, you know, a lot of riding in the desert and a lot of riding on the road so hopefully they will last a long time. Uh, that's kind of why the D606 didn't last out here very long, uh, and probably the T63s as well. Just those wider knobs tend to just disappear faster on the road and in the hard pack of the desert. So anyway. Okay, uh, do you ever read these messages, and why did you turn off your Facebook messages? <laughs> Oh, you guys, I feel this is like one of those things that I feel bad about. Um, messages are pretty hectic. As I was going through messages a while ago, you know, I noticed I, I, I'm not getting that many messages. And then I looked and I saw that my um, spam folder had like tons and tons of messages in it. So I'm guessing that probably 80% of all messages go to my spam folder. And so I started to go through that. There are probably thousands of actually spam messages. And then some of them are legitimate messages, but they're just, there's just too many spam messages. So I, I just don't have time to go through each one. And anyway, so if you want to send me a message, I'm totally fine with that. I love re responding to messages. Um, if I haven't, it's probably because it ended up in the spam folder. And I've noticed that if your message is ever super, super long or, um, you know, super, super short, or if there's any links in it, then YouTube tends to just put it in the spam folder and I never even see it. So just make sure to do that. Uh, and then on the Facebook, you know, on the Facebook messages, um, that was just, I was just getting too overwhelmed. People are, are always on Facebook. So, you know, I would get on the computer and spend a couple hours and answer like a hundred messages. By the time I was done with the messages, you know, a hundred messages, there would be a hundred more messages, a uh, hundred new replies, plus more people, you know, new messages. And if you've been following the channel, you knew, I, you know, I battle a lot with depression and suicidal thoughts and uh, months of medication that helps now. And, and really, a lot of those messages were about people's struggles with that, and, and, I, and I did love to help, and I tried to hang in and, and help people for a long time, but uh, over time, I, I just, I know this sounds terrible, but I just could not be, you know, a therapist or, or this pillar, um, because I, but by doing that, I couldn't be emotionally healthy with my own family. I mean, I was, I, I'm also struggling, and so for people to tell me their stories of depression, uh, it was cool to hear and it was cool to see the people who overcome it and, and some people weren't overcoming it and um, I just, I'm not a counselor, I'm not a, I'm not a professional uh, therapist so I just decided to stop that so anyway, if, if, if I never got back to your message, know that I still love you um, but just, you know, leave comments uh, and, and I will
will get back to the comments. I do read every single comment, and even even though I'm in a better place now with some medication and stuff, uh, I'm I'm just still not in a place where I can, you know, um, just deal with that. I, I don't want to sound like a jerk, but that's just the, the way that it is. So I'm sorry about that. But all right, um, next question. Okay, who are the winners for Travis's GoFundMe? You said you were giving away shirts and stickers. I don't know yet. I'll do the randomization and then I'll tell you what. I'll put those, the winners in the description so you can send me a message uh, with your address and I'll send you a shirt or a sticker. For those of you guys who have no idea what was going on on Facebook, um, I wanted to do something nice for Travis. He's the guy who broke his leg a couple of videos back. I know his insurance premium was was huge. I mean, his, his deductible was huge. So I wanted to do something to help him. He held off for a long time. I kept bugging him, kept bugging him. And finally, you know, he's like, man, this is like a huge chunk of my income just going to this deductible. And it's a lot more expensive than I thought it would be. You know, healthcare in the United States, it's broken. So anyway, um, I said that I'd give away stickers and t-shirts to a couple random people. Uh, who who uh, supported his GoFundMe, so uh, winners will be in the description, so check that out at the very bottom of the description so I don't uh, blow it, so now you know. All right, next one. Okay, this question uh, is on the last Emigride. I said you uploaded every Sunday, but now you're uploading on Saturday, and on your page it says Saturday. Um, why, why do you pick those days? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I'm going to upload on uh, Saturday now, probably in the morning. Um, Saturdays don't do as well as Sundays, just for YouTube statistics and stuff like that. Sundays are, for it seems like for my audience anyway, Sundays are the best days by far. Um, but what that meant for me was that I would have to work all uh, Saturday and then on into Sunday uh, to get the video uploaded, to do all the meta and tags and description and picture for the video. Truthfully, you know, my kids are in school now and uh, I was missing my kids on their day off, on their Saturdays and Sundays. So I decided to switch to Saturdays so I can I can just work a little bit on Saturday morning to get the meta out of the way and then spend more time with my family because seriously, you know, what else is this about? Also, um, if you follow the channel, maybe you'll be like, oh, I hate you for this or whatever, but I am a religious person and I, I, uh, I am trying to be um, a better person uh, when it comes to following my own religious convictions, so I do want to keep the Sabbath day uh, holy. So uh, there you have it. You know, that's just me. Sorry if that bothers you. Um, if it doesn't bother you, that's cool. If it does bother you, that's cool too. I think you're awesome either way. Uh, whatever. Next, <laughs> next question. Okay, so a lot of people wanted to know uh, why I didn't freak out uh, while I was riding on the cliffside. Uh, and the truth is, I was, <laughs> I was actually free freaking out. Here's kind of the story behind that. When I worked at, as, at a treatment center, as a counselor, and then as a teacher, uh, I had to take these crisis prevention classes like every year. And, and uh, you know, when you first start working there, you go through like a three-week crisis prevention program that's just gnarly. And so basically you get this training, and then in real life, you know, when crazy situations come up and somebody stabs you in the hand or <laughs> uh, with a pencil or whatever, or when there's a fight happening, um, you know, your adrenaline pumps and and your brain goes to this controlled place. So anyway, I just kicked into that. So when I, when the adrenaline goes up, for me anyway, you know, my voice gets calm. I kind of go into this command, uh, like leadership mode where I like command the situation. Uh, basically, they train you to, don't, you don't show any fear, you don't show any weakness, but you're like calm and in control of the situation. It was kind of funny because as I was as I was doing the ride, I felt like I was flipping out. Um, and then to go back and watch it, it's like I didn't even, it's like I was not scared at all, but I was, I was like, <laughs> I was pooping my pants. So anyway, um, <laughs> Uh, next question. Okay, what is happening with the BLM issue that I posted to Facebook, the emergency upload? Um, this is kind of just a sad story. Uh, you know, the last thing that I heard, they were just kind of doing things, you know, under the table. Um, they're skirting the public opinion and basically trying to introduce the condor into southern Utah, into these lands, uh, so that it would have to be shut down to off-highway high vehicles. That's a good 
good way to take the vote completely out of it. Um, you know, introduce an endangered species that's non-native. And then when that species dies off because it's non-native, then they can blame it on OHV and blah, blah, blah. And they can shut it down. Truth of the matter is, is that there is an aquifer uh, out at where these lands are, um, especially the Beaver Dam area. Water means power in the desert. And so, especially in like, you know, uh, poop hits the fan situation, water is, the water is king. So you know that uh, they, they're, they're gonna want control of that water and that land. And uh, I don't know, that kind of stuff scares me. So anyway, uh, next question. All right, uh, this comes from another uh, question from the Facebook contest. I posted a tiny little video where this freaking weird phantom thing went across my lens. It was probably just a bug, but I just wanted to have fun with it. Another one of those fun Facebook contests. Yeah, seriously, follow on Facebook. And the winner is, I laughed and t I snorted. I had boogers coming out of my nose. <laughs> But uh, it's Tyler A, and he said that the, the black thing going across the screen was um, Hillary Clinton's deleted emails. <laughs> So, uh, Tyler's the winner. He's going to get a shirt and some stickers and stuff. Um, you know, I try to keep things non-political on the channel other than, like, land use issues, but I just thought that was way too funny. Okay, a lot of you guys have wanted to know what's happening with the free stickers. Am I going to do those again? The answer is yes. We're firing up the sticker machine uh, with some new designs, and we actually invested in a, uh, in a shirt press. So we'll be doing sh uh, shirts as well. Um, obviously, the shirts can't be free except for with little giveaways and stuff but the stickers uh, we will be doing the free stickers again this is a really good question and it's relevant because um, my buddy uh, enduro rider northwest nw posted a video titled um, is moto vlogging broken a question that i got a lot uh, and a question that i continue to get is why did you stop moto vlogging why aren't you a moto vlogger anymore i do kind of i i, I kind of have distanced myself from moto vlogging for a little while i just don't feel like i fit in with most moto vloggers especially um, the really popular the ones I like the really popular ones most of them you know I don't feel that my personality merits the the type the, the amount of subscribers that, that they do you know I, I like to do my own style I like to put out a really highly edited video that I can feel proud of um, and I like to keep things positive and I know that I'm not saying that a lot of vloggers are negative some are but uh, it seems like a surefire recipe for subscribers is to road rage and to be rude to other drivers and to scream and yell a lot and that's you know to each his own and sometimes those are funny and I do watch those but that's just not really me and uh, you know the real me I just don't think a lot of people can relate to who I am so that and because I've been in a few like crisis and, and like near crisis situations while out riding uh, I just don't like to ride alone anymore and when I'm riding with buddies we always are riding with our headsets so truthfully I'd rather just chat with my friends than cut them off to moto vlog I think that's kind of rude um, so I'd rather just chat with them and get footage and then you know on my way home do this and um, Hopefully you guys are okay with that. Hope you, hopefully you're okay with a moto vlog. All right, so last but not least, how do you make money on YouTube? Um, I get asked this by people in real life when they hear that I am full-time on YouTube. They're like, what? And I get a ton of comments and messages about this as well. I also get a lot of messages from people who are like, hey, how can I help you? Can I? What's your PayPal address? I want to send you some money or whatever. Um, and I'm just kind of not quite ready for that yet. I don't, I, anyway, um, the best thing for my channel is to grow. Um, so the YouTube things, you know, liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting, um, uh, watch time is a huge thing. So if you want to help my, if you want to help my channel, uh, you know, when you click on a video, watch the whole video, even if you go make a sandwich or whatever, watch the whole video, watch playlists. Um, if I could get my watch time to go through the roof, uh, that would be the best thing for my channel ever. So anyway, actual money that you make from YouTube and Google itself is based on people clicking ads. But that doesn't mean that you should click ads when they're shown on my videos. Actually, don't do that um, unless you're legitimately interested in what that ad is 
is showing. Because what happens is YouTube knows. They know that you're a subscriber, they, you know, and so basically it'll be like, well, this guy, people just click his ads and it's, and it's just, they're just clicking it for him or whatever. And so we're not, the ads will cost less for his channel. And then clicking on ads that, that you're not actually interested in, it tells the algorithm that that ad is working for my channel. And so that, then my channel starts showing like tampon commercials and stuff that are not related at all. But um, I have been happy to see ads on my channel recently for like zero motorcycles and Honda motorcycles. And so those ads, that's like, oh, hey, that is a motorcycling thing. So if you are interested in something like that, then uh, clicking is definitely not going to hurt. It, you know, it's like 25 cents and not even that usually. But anyway, uh, the other way is like I mentioned before, uh, uh, free stickers for using the links. Basically, I'm happy to send people free stickers if they will um, help me out by favoriting everride.org and then use those links on everride.org that go to Amazon and Rocky Mountain and Cycle Gear and Revzilla and all those places. Um, if they will, you know, if they're needing to shop for stuff, if they'll go through my links to make the comparisons and shop wisely, um, then I do get a little commission for that and that helps a lot. And you get a free sticker, it doesn't cost you anything, and um, I get paid a little bit for it and that's the main funding for my channel. The unfortunate thing is that the last few months, um, I made this video a while ago where I was like, hey, yeah, I, I've broken even, this is super cool. And the funny thing is, is that like the last two months, have absolutely tanked and um, we've had to rely on savings and I've had to do some other um, you know stuff for income so if you have a sticker or if you're interested in doing the sticker thing soon uh, please use those links guys it's it's just the best because you don't pay anything um, I've already said that stuff so I'm sorry uh, I'll continue <laughs> All right, uh, I've been thinking about other ways that I could possibly support the channel. I've thought about maybe saying, hey, this is my uh, eBay account, and I'm going to be eBaying some stuff um, uh, like PlayStation games or, or, you know, motorcycle stuff or whatever, just to get it on eBay. And if you guys want to have something, maybe you could send me a message, and I'll send you an extra sticker or a shirt or something like that if you win something from me on eBay. Um, my wife has an Etsy shop, like I said, uh, in an earlier video, I think, but um, uh, she already sells stickers and shirts and mugs. Uh, she just barely started selling the shirts, but um, so we're gonna just kind of include Everide in that stuff. Um, not including the free stickers. The free stickers are gonna be free. They're gonna be pretty basic stickers, um, just to kind of support the channel. And uh, truthfully, we're happy to do custom things. Um, we'll see how that goes in the future. All right, a lot of people have asked me about PayPal or Patreon. A lot of people are like, hey, you should do a Patreon. And I'm, I looked into Patreon and they actually, and they, when it's all said and done, they take like 10%. Um, and so if I was gonna do something like that, I, I've actually set something like that up before and then backed out. And I'm really strongly considering doing something like that again, just because I am at a limit of what I can do with the channel because I, I only make enough to support my family. I can't, um, I can't go on longer trips. I can't uh, do a lot of stuff because I, I, that would be irresponsible to leave my family hanging while I go and do these things. You know, if I did something like that, it would basically be like, you'd be like an executive producer almost, where, you know, if you did want to support the channel that way, um, then, then uh, you know, maybe we'd create like a private Facebook group or something like that, and then people could give me input on what they think about logos, what they think about um, what videos I should make, what things I should review. Um, just kind of give me feedback on where they'd like the channel to go. Now, obviously, I would still be in control of the channel. It's my baby, but um, if people uh, wanted to say in that, and then this is this is all just an idea. So I'm gonna need you guys, if you're listening still, to. Uh, uh, comment and tell me what what you think about that um, uh, you know I'm just bouncing ideas off of you guys you guys are you guys are awesomes and and I and I trust what you uh, what you say so so the other way is sponsorships um, uh, or like paid videos paid promo videos um, I did a few for green chili adventure gear a while back uh, I did one for KLR dash I'm actually working with Rocky Mountain ATV MC with right now which is super super awesome sponsorships and paid videos are awesome and that's why I would recommend to anybody if you're starting a YouTube channel keep it family friendly because if it's not you'll have a lot harder time uh, getting sponsors so you guys this is a, this is the big part this is the big weird part there's this 
paradox of my channel. Um, and a lot of people comment and they say, hey, I'm really glad that you're, you do like unbiased, unpaid reviews. Um, and I, you know, I appreciate that and I want to keep doing that. Uh, and on my channel, I want to recommend like inexpensive things that really work. And, and also, you know, I kind of have this vibe on my channel that's like, you know, forget brand loyalty and, and, you know, you don't have to have the most expensive thing. You know, you can do things on a budget and you can do DIY things and stuff like that. And there's kind of been this vibe for a long time where it's like, you don't need to buy a lot of stuff to go on an adventure. I have a problem because in this industry I'm finding out more and more that I cannot feed my family unless I'm selling something. You know, whether that's from links or getting sponsors or you know, or something like that. You know what I mean? And so there's this there's this fine line where it's like I, I absolutely don't want to be that proverbial sellout, you know what I mean? But at the same time I want to grow my channel and I, <laughs> I definitely want to take care of my family and live my dream. This has been amazing. So I thought about like what constitutes a sellout and, and how I want to avoid that. When I look at a sponsorship, um, when I pitch, I, I let sponsors know exactly I'll only promote their product if I can actually recommend it. And that will be a totally honest review with all pros and all cons or else no review at all. You know, if they send me a product, happy to check it out. But if I can't recommend it, I'll, I won't make a video unless they're like, okay, make a negative review, but nobody wants that. So, and it's a waste of everybody's time. So basically it's like, I'll only do honest reviews, even if they are paid reviews. So that's my promise to you. And I want you to know that I have, uh, even in the beginning stages, I have actually rejected a bunch of companies already after testing their products. Um, there have been some, some Chinese companies that were just a no-brainer where they sent me some messages and they were like, hey, we want to give you this stuff and da 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 da. And then I'd look at the ratings of their site and I'm like, no, I'm not even going to touch this, you know. And then some well-known, you know, some well-known companies that that have been around and who have approached moto vloggers and things like that um, that I've just said I'm sorry I can't I, I've tested this for a while I can't recommend it um, and so I don't and then it's fine you know there's no hard feelings it's just I, I just can't recommend this over what I'm already recommending and then I'm actually in the process right now for uh, reviewing some in-house gear for Rocky Mountain ATV MC um, which as if you follow the channel you have known this for a long time that's been like a dream of mine for years now because um, honestly uh, most of the stuff that's made for uh, Rocky Mountain with their house brands like ARC and Tusk um, I've recommended a lot of those stuff a lot of the stuff I already have on my bike is is Tusk stuff some of my armor is already ARC armor basically I don't I don't feel bad at all when I already own something and I can go to a company and be like you know send them a message and be like hey your your product XYZ Z totally saved my bacon and I would love to make a video for you um, and then they get back to me and they're like cool you know whatever if I go to a company and say hey I love your stuff I think that's fine because I already love their stuff if a company comes to me then then uh, definitely I'll do like a, a thorough review process and I'll test I'll test it out before I you know tell other people to get it long story short I'm sorry to make this long but um, you know what is my channel if it's just crap endorsements Th the whole soul of my channel from the very beginning is that if I can do it, so can you. And anybody can go on an adventure and, and adventures don't have to be expensive. And so if that gets diluted, um, then basically my channel becomes worthless. And I know that. And I know that you guys, you the audience, are the most important part of this channel. And so lying to you for a couple of bucks, uh, uh, that's like that, that's like biting the hand that feeds. Because ultimately the hand that feeds is not the sponsors. The hand that feeds is you guys. So if I recommend crappy stuff, you guys are like, oh, whatever, you just recommend and crap now that's not going to happen I uh, always recommend the, the best stuff I can find um, and, and stuff that I truly believe in so anyway guys that is it for me thank you so much for watching um, you guys I really appreciate you guys I know this was kind of a long one but I hope you enjoyed the questions and answers and if you want to send me a message um, on YouTube or uh, just a comment on Facebook or a comment on here with a question I'd love to answer it. I think this is a really good idea. Uh, I saw it on uh, Hermit Devlog's channel a little bit ago. Oh, that's another question I get a lot, actually. Um, and the question is, is Hermit Devlog really 
a, a jerk? Or is Hermit the Vlog a really, are you really his enemy? Or is Ned real or whatever? And the answer to those is, um, no. <laughs> uh, Hermit's super cool. He, you know, on the channel, his character's kind of a jerk. But in real life, there's probably not a nicer, more generous, uh, smarter person out there. And I think that kind of shows through in his videos. I think he's kind of cracking a little bit. And the real nice guy behind, the, you know, the, the vlog uh, uh, facade is coming out. Anyway, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, much love to you. Have a ride out.